Hi, welcome to Coffee and Astronomy. I'm Jim Craig. And one of the questions that I got asked when I worked at the planetarium or when I go out with the astronomy club, do star parties, that sort of thing, people will ask me, well, I want to get my first telescope. What should I get? And they're surprised by the two answers I give them. The first answer I give them is you probably already have them. Probably already have a telescope. Or I will say, buy two telescopes. Um, you'll have to buy them together. They don't sell them separately, at least not easily. They're going to be about this long. They're going to be hinged in the middle, and you're going to hold them up to your eyes. People forget that binoculars are telescopes, and most good modern binoculars are better than any telescope Galileo had available to him. Now, I've got three pairs of binoculars here, in ranging in quality and size. And the first is the first pair of binoculars I got when I thought I was getting serious about astronomy. And I found these at a garage sale, a yard sale, and for those of you in the UK, car boot sale. These. These were $3 US, and they're not great binoculars. Uh, they're not very large in diameter, not a lot of magnification. One thing I did like about them is that each eyepiece will focus separately, although the focus is uh, little strange the way it lists here. I hope I can show this on the camera. It says far and near. But before I disparage these binoculars too badly, I have to say they showed me a lot before I got my first telescope, or my first good telescope. I have seen uh, star clusters, both globular and open clusters. I have seen various nebulae with these. I have uh, seen comets with these. In fact, I had just gotten these uh, binoculars when a friend of mine and I had read about a comet that would be visible in the night sky. And I, unlike when I went out to see Holly's Comet, I went out somewhat more prepared. I looked to see which constellation it was in, which star it would be near on that particular date. And we pulled into the parking lot in the dark area where we were going. I opened the door. I put one foot on the ground, didn't even step out of the car, put these binoculars up, looked up and said, found it. I found it right away, uh, which did not endear me to my friend because he was hoping it would take me a little longer than that. But again, not great, but they got me started. So when I got a little bit more education when it came to doing astronomy, I bought these. And these are made by Orion, but there are a lot of different uh, astronomical companies companies that make them. This is, I don't even know if they have this particular model available anymore, but these are the Scenics 10 by 50. And uh, I like them. They're lightweight, fairly lightweight. And again, I've seen um, nebulae. I've even seen a couple of galaxies with these. I've seen, um, and I've seen M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. I've seen M33, Triangulum Galaxy. Um, I've seen the Eagle Nebula, the Triffid Nebula, uh, the Lagoon Nebula, lots of star clusters, the uh, Precipi, the Beehive Cluster in the Constellation Cancer looks amazing through this, it, through these binoculars. It looks like a scattering of diamond dust on black velvet. It's absolutely beautiful. But uh, a nice thing about these binoculars is, well, let me start by talking about the optical path because the light's going to come in here. It's going... Uh, it's going to come down here, it's going to bend, then come out the eyepiece, which means that there are prisms inside this part, which uh, that means that every place that there is a glass surface, you're going to get some reflection. So they put coatings on them, anti-reflective coatings. So you're not looking at like five images of one object. A lot of times when you see in movies, they'll show an image through a telescope or something, you'll see like the sun and then you'll see these little you know, or some bright point of light, and you see like five points of light with it. Those are reflections inside the binoculars. Another nice thing about these, well, I'll talk about a little bit more about that in a moment to show you the other pair of binoculars I have, the third pair. Because the aperture on these is pretty good, but it's not the biggest. And if I really want to get a good look at a comet, I pull out the big guns. These are my Jumel. 20 by 80 binoculars. I had managed to find them on sale. And these aren't the kind of binoculars you're just going to hold like this and spend hours looking at the sky. So one of the things that it comes with built in is something that adapts it to put it on a tripod. Another nice thing about being able to put it on a tripod is you can aim at something, move out of the way, and then let somebody else take a look through the binoculars. 
this also about will move forward and back to shift the balance so you're not front heavy and you're not back heavy which is very useful but uh, this little feature here of being able to put it on a tripod is very useful another thing you want is to make sure that you can get one eye in focus and then have one of the eyepieces that can adjust because if your eyesight's like mine i have you know different vision in each eye i have astigmatism i have to adjust to my better eye and then adjust this one so both images are very clear and in focus and the nice thing when you're using both eyes is your brain manages to add those images together and you get a clearer, sharper image than you can by squinting and looking at an eyepiece. But the thing I was saying about being able to put them on a tripod, some binoculars will come, a little cap that you can take off. You have to get an adapter, but it lets you attach this to a tripod. And you do want a tripod if you can, because holding up binoculars, even these lightweight ones, after a while your arms get tired and your hands will get shaky. And instead of seeing the little pinpoint stars like you want to see, everything looks like a pinwheel because the stars are swirling around. Now, if you can't put your, tele your binoculars on a tripod, you know, either they aren't equipped for it or you don't have one, just find something you can plant your elbow on, like the picnic table or the top of your car, the hood of your car, or lean against a tree. Something that gives you some steadiness so your binoculars aren't shaking everywhere as you're trying to look through them. But yeah, look for multi-coated. <clears throat> look for something that has a tripod mount. That's it. You may already have a pair of binoculars. If you've got them, great. Use them. Um, even if you already own a telescope, they're nice to have. When I go out and do my setup uh, in the twilight, sometimes I'm trying to find the stars that I need to align my telescope on. I can't see them naked eye or with my glasses on. I can't see them, but I'll be able to find them with binoculars because I got this wide field of view and it makes them a lot easier to find. Uh, something uh, also make sure that you can adjust them because not everybody's eyes are the same width. Some people's eyes are farther apart, some are closer together. I'm not going to make a judgment on whether, you know, what kind of person that makes you. It's just one of those things of nature. Um, but if you've got a pair of binoculars, use them. If you don't have a pair of binoculars, you want to get a pair of binoculars, try to look for a company that deals in astronomical binoculars. I mean, if you can't, you know, but that's one of the reasons that I got these from Orion. But there are other companies. Uh, I know Celestron makes binoculars, Mead makes binoculars. A lot of different astronomical companies make binoculars. You don't need huge ones. By the way, before I wrap this up, I want to talk about those numbers. 10 by 50. That first digit, 10, that first number, 10, that's the magnification. These will magnify 10 times. 50 is the aperture. That's how many millimeters across that opening is. These are 10 by 50s. The big ones are 20 by 80, which means that they magnify 20 times. And these are 80 millimeters across. So this is like having two 80 millimeter telescopes that you, hold, that you put up to your eyes. And they give really remarkable views. And binoculars are a great way to get started in astronomy. They're great for veterans of astronomy. So if you've got them, please use them. By the way, I can't, I've looked through the comments. I can't find out who said it, but I do want to send a thanks out. So if you are the person who um, made the suggestion, I want to thank you and I want to acknowledge you in my next video. So please give me a special shout. But somebody suggested that I do uh, one of the, do one of the coffee and astronomy videos on binoculars and so this one's for you again i'm sorry i can't find out who you are i'm actually a little embarrassed about that but it also i also want to show that this means i am responsive to you my viewers because i do this for you i, I do this for me because i enjoy it i do this for you because i want you to go out and enjoy something that i have loved for so many years so until next time this is jim craig with coffee and astronomy hope you get out and enjoy the skies <laughs>